Okay, Chan Physics, uh, this is Mr. Block on uh, Monday, um, and um, I'm going to be out for the first two periods, so you're going to be watching this by video instead. Um, but then I will be back, so tell everyone that I'm, I'm not uh, flexing anyone today because I'm going to be back. So what we're looking at is uh, free fall, and so I just want to review the stuff that we talked about and then go over the problem sheet that I want you guys to be working on today, and then we're going to look at um, free fall distance. So I have this screen up here right now. Remember, free fall is when an object moves and only gravity is acting on it. And one of the things that I want to make sure that we always remember in these problems is that up is positive and down is negative, right is positive, left is negative. So that's really important because if we remember those concepts, we'll always get these problems right in our equations work for us. So if we go to um, the free fall speed equation, remember, there's only really two things I can ask you guys to find in free fall. Um, what's the speed of the object at certain points, and then what's the distance that it's fallen? And so the first one that we were working on in the sheet was this free fall equation, VF equals VI plus AT, where A is negative 9.8 on Earth. And so if we uh, go to now the screen of the sheet that we were working on, we can see that this is where we left off. And most of us have done this first problem here. We had the uh, donut challenge right here, um, where it says Stan says that he observes this because the force of gravity is, is the same on all objects. Remember, the force of gravity is the force that pulls you down. And so bigger things are heavier. And so the force of gravity is more on that. It's the acceleration due to gravity that's the same. And that's what creates um, why things fall at the same rate. So that was the, the first one. Now the second one asks you to create a chart. And so if you read it, it says the ball is dropped from the edge of a cliff. Remember, when we drop a ball, its velocity is zero. And it lands four seconds later. Assume there is no air resistance. Make a table. See, this is where I think a lot of people, like, they read this and they say, oh, my God, I can't do this problem. So let's just learn how to attack a problem when we don't really know exactly what they're asking. They're saying make a table. So we all know what a table looks like. It looks like this. Include time and speed. So here's time and velocity or speed. And showing the ball speed each second for four seconds. So one, two, three, and four. And so what I want you to do in this problem is really just simply do four four column methods. We'll just split our sheet into four pieces. And we'll do time equals one, time equals two, time equals three, and time equals four. So those are our four seconds. Our equations are always the same, VF equals VI plus AT. So that will be the same throughout. And then all you'll have to do is then go, okay, well, VF is equal to zero, because it's dropped, plus negative 9.8 times one. Okay, so that's because our, our time is one. If this looks like a seven, I'm sorry, it's one. All right, so then you'll do this and you'll get VF is equal to negative 9.8 and you'll put in negative 9.8 right here. So what will you do for the next one? Well, VF equals zero plus negative 9.8 times two. And we'll just continue on and fill in our chart. Okay, so that problem, I know some people have trouble with uh, figuring that problem out, but you can see it's really just simple. Um, and it just wants you to practice this VF equals VI plus AT equation four different times. All right, so then the next question is question three. A pebble is dropped down a well. You hear it hit the bottom 3.8 seconds later. What was the speed of the pebble on impact? A lot of people are wondering what this is. Of course, you guys remember, we always try to give you the answers so that you know it's correct. This is a four-column method problem. They say T is equal to uh, 3.8. Someone's attacking my house this Sunday morning. Uh, 3.8. The ball is dropped, so VI is equal to zero, and they're asking us to find VF. So it's just VF equals VI plus AT, and we substitute and we solve here. All right, the next problem is really just like problem two, but this time I actually gave you the, the chart, and so all you'll have to do is exactly what we talked about before. Split your paper into four columns four um, rows, and t equals to one, t equals two, t equals three, 
and t equals 4. Our equation vf equals vi plus at, but this time they're telling us the ball is thrown up at a speed of 19.6. And so now, instead of vi being 0, because the ball was dropped, instead it's going to be 19.6 plus negative 9.8 times 1. All right? You'll do this equation, 19.6 plus negative 9.8 times 1, put in the speed. Then you'll put in 2 here, 3 here, and 4. Now remember, what we should see is a ball going up, and going down. And so the first one, our number should be less. It should be slowing down. The next one, we should be zero or close to zero. The next one, we should start seeing a negative number. And the fourth one, four, at four seconds, we should see a, a, a bigger negative number. Okay? All right. And then the last part of this problem set is just ask you to find the speed after one second, after two and a half seconds. So again, our equation is VF equals VI plus AT. Okay, make sure that you look at the problem. What's the initial velocity? Is it dropped? Is it thrown up? Is it thrown down? Same thing here. And if you get to this point right here, remember, this is the problem I told you guys. It's going to be really difficult. And remember, our hint is that what is the speed of the ball at the top? What's the velocity? If you can get to here, then I'm really happy because we'll go over that on, on, um, on Tuesday. All right, so now I just need to um, go over the new section for us, and that is, once we know speed, then we can just, now we need to look at velocity, I mean, uh, distance. And so the distance equation is really the more difficult of the two. So here we have the free fall distance. And just like we should expect, right, if things start falling faster and faster and faster, then every millisecond, that ball is going to keep moving more and more distance. And so the distance equation is really quite difficult. This is one of the more, more difficult equations that we're going to look at. So the distance increases exponentially, which means that it goes up like in a curve like that. And so the equation for free fall distance is d is equal to vi times the time plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared. And this is going to make um, uh, physics more like math class for the next couple months because we're going to be dissecting this equation and learning how to do some of the um, stuff with squares and, and halves and things like that. But right now, this is really just a plug and chug type equation for us. And so you guys should not be afraid of this equation at all right now. It's really just, can you do the four column method? And can you um, figure out um, what's the difference when we throw things up and, and, um, and drop them or throw them down? All right, so we're going to do all three experiments or all three possibilities. The easiest one, of course, is when we drop it. So here, I'm going to pull this over here, put the dot camera in. As we want to be taking notes, it says, what if we fall from rest? So this is the first um, time we're going to use that equation. What if we fall from rest? A skydiver falls from rest for six and a half seconds before opening your parachute. What is the distance that the skydiver fell? Well, here, again, for those of you guys who are still struggling on the four-column method, this is not a, a question where we anticipate what the question, what the um, equation is going to be. Instead, we read the question and we get what we can. So, if a skydiver falls from rest, we should know by now that means its initial velocity is zero. So, vi is equal to zero. For six and a half seconds, that's a time, six point five. And they're asking what's the distance the skydiver goes. So, we're looking for distance equals the question mark. If we know we're in free fall. Someone's falling, right? Then there's only one equation, and we put that up on the back of the board, and we're reminding you those are the free fall equations. And so we just write that equation down. D is equal to VI times T plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times T squared. And when I put that in my equation, D is equal to VI, which is 0, times 6.5 plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times 6.5 squared. All right, now this is where we'll have to do a little bit of math, but not a lot of, not a lot of algebra. 0 times 6.5 is 0. Don't make that 6.5. That's 0 times 6.5 is 0. All right, so plus 1.5 times negative 9.8 times 6.5. Okay, and so now I've got a calculator here. So how do I put 1 half times negative 9.8 times 6.5 in? 
right? So I would just say, well, it's 1 divided by 2 times negative 9.8. So remember, you have to use this negative sign all the way, sorry, down, down here. You've got to use this negative sign down here. You can't use this negative. You have to use this negative. So 1 and a half times negative 9.8 times 6.5. And then we need to use this square button right here to square that right? and hit the equal button. And we're going to get negative 207.02. So equals negative 207.025 meters. And why is that negative? Well, it has fallen down. We've gone down from where we started. And so that's the great thing about these equations is that we, what we know if we have a positive number, then the distance is up from where we, we, we uh, started. But because we dropped this, we should expect everything to be down. Okay. And then it just says, what is the, her speed after six and a half seconds? Well, this is just so you guys can remember that you have all the same information here. But when we ask for our speed, we'll just use the free fall speed equation. And so the only difference here is, I just want to remind you, is when they ask for a distance, use the distance equation. And when they ask for speed, use the speed equation. So that's from REST. And we'll work on uh, those problems on Tuesday. But you'll get that handed out. So if you have time, you can start this. But let's try the other two, two other, other ideas. So what if we, instead of dropping a ball, we throw it up? Okay, so a baseball player throws a ball in the air with an initial speed of 3.5. What's the velocity after three seconds? Well, we'll just do the th four column method. This time our initial velocity is 35. Our um, final velocity is what they ask us to find and our time is three seconds, All right? You guys can use that equation, you know it, VF equals VI plus AT, and plug that in. But how high is the ball after three seconds? Well, it's the same initial stuff, but they're asking us the distance. V equals VIT plus one half AT squared. And when I plug this in, it makes it, what makes it a little bit difficult is that instead of having a VI of zero when we drop it, we actually have a VI of 35 times three plus one half times negative 9.8 times three squared. All right, looks like a lot, but our calculators are perfect to handle all that. We can just plug that straight into our calculator. And so 35 times three plus one divided by two times negative 9.8 times three squared, and we get 60.9 so that's equal to 60.9 meters the ball is still up in the air and it's going up so it's a positive number so sorry you guys can't see that off my screen here but the answer is 60.9 okay so what's the velocity after five seconds let's this is the more interesting thing so vf equals vi plus at well when we put this in right here after five seconds we get 35 plus negative 9.8 times 5. Put that in my calculator. And I get 35 plus negative 9.8 times 5. And I get negative 14 meters per second. We now know that after 5 seconds, this ball has reached its top and is all the way already going down. Okay? And so we'll see also that um, we can do the same equation, the d equals vit plus 1 half at squared. We're still likely going to get a positive number here, but it's going to be on the downside. We just need to picture that. All right. So now what if, and the last thing is, what if we throw a ball down? And so if a ball is thrown down, there's nothing different. A student sneaks up to the top of a, a tower, he throws a penny, no air resistance, down at a velocity of 20. What's the distance traveled if the penny lands 4.1 seconds later? So we have a VI of 20, but it's down. So it's negative 20. VF is um, unnecessary. We don't need to know that for the distance. So they're asking us to find the distance. And um, they give us a time of 4.1 seconds. All right? Since they're asking us for a distance, we'll use the distance equation. 
and then we'll just plug it in. D is equal to negative 20 times 4.1 plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times 4.1 squared. All right. Again, if we need practice of our calculator, that's great. Remember, this button down here on the TI-35 is the negative button. So negative 20 times 4.1 plus 1 divided by 2 times negative 9.8 times 4.1 squared. And we get a negative 164. So, point three six. So I'll just tell you guys right now. I like I like to put everything in the calculator at once, but I know some people might be a little bit nervous about that. So certainly you could do negative twenty times four point one, and then do the one half times negative nine point eight, and then put them together. That's fine too. But um, if we can learn how to put everything in our calculator, we do better. All right. So uh, right now there is a new new uh, sheet that we're going to be handing out. Um, so you'll be getting that. Uh, my expectation is that if you have time, you're working on this. And so here we have a penny is dropped from a welding, um, a wishing well. It hits the bottom 1.5 seconds later. Ask for the velocity and ask for the distance. So you'll use the velocity equation here, the distance equation here. All right. Um, see if we can get through at least half because we've got some work to do on Tuesday on weight. And then remember, Wednesday we'll have... Um, uh, the day for the study guide, and then Friday we'll have the Unit 2 test. Hope you guys are all well, and come see me later in the day if you need to ask me any questions.